Hey, what's going on everybody? So today I'm going to show you how to set up a Minecraft Feed the Beast server on Ubuntu server. Now the last video I did covering how to set up a Minecraft server was done on Ubuntu, but it was the desktop version. Personally, I like to run my Minecraft servers on Ubuntu Server Edition because there is no GUI, no graphical interface, so it uses a lot less resources. And most of the power of whatever machine you're putting this on can be dedicated to running the server instead of it using some resources for, you know, the graphics of the machine itself. Now, since it doesn't have a graphical interface, that means that all the configuration is done in command line, so it can be a little more difficult to get off the ground if you are not used to working with Linux or command line in general. Now, for this video, I am going to assume that you have another machine available that's running like Windows or OS X or something like that, so that we can download the files we need and copy them over to our server. And we're gonna be using a tool called WinSCP. You can also use FileZilla or anything that supports SCP. And that's just to get our downloaded server files onto the machine so that we can run them. Now, if you don't know how to install Ubuntu Server, I have another video on that. I go over how to install it on Unraid, but the installation steps are basically the same. Now, the Feed the Beast server files I'm going to be using today is the Direwolf 1.12 edition. So we're going to download that from the Feed the Beast website, and then we're going to copy that to our server, and then download it on a client to play it. For this mod pack, you're going to need roughly at least 4 gigs of RAM on your server to run it. The one that I'm using is running 8, but I'm not here to go over hardware requirements. Obviously, the faster hard drive you have, the more processor cores, or faster the processor, rather, and more RAM you have, the better your server is going to run. So, first things first, let's set up our Ubuntu server machine. I'm going to install it right now while I snap my fingers, and boom, we have a virtual machine ready to go. All right, so at this point, we need to go to Feed the Beast and download our server files. So just Google Feed the Beast, and it should be the first result here, feedthebeast.com. And we're going to ignore that big download now button, and we're going to go down here to Packs, and we're going to look for the Direwolf uh, 1.12. So right here, Direwolf 21.12, click on that. And on the right here, we can see that we have server packs. So let's download the release version here and open ourselves a new tab to download WinSCP. So just Google WinSCP and this first link here. And we'll just download that now. And yep, download. And there we go. So let's uh, kind of minimize our thing here. Copy our Feed the Beast zip to the desktop as well as our WinSCP executable. Well, it doesn't look like it's completely done yet, so let's go ahead and extract our server files. So right-click, go to Extract All, and let this do its thing. Now we can move WinSCP to the desktop, and we'll go ahead and double-click on that and run it. And yeah, accept, blah, 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 blah. And we're just going to launch WinSCP. And let's leave that there for now and just see where our extraction is right now. Go ahead and exit out of Chrome. And it looks like we got about five minutes left on extracting that folder. So while we're doing that, let's just look at our server IP address. So let's log into the Linux uh, Ubuntu server machine. And just do an interface config, so if config, and that should show us our IP address. So right there we got uh, 10.6.6.6.181. So that is going to be what we're going to connect to with WinSCP. So go back to our desktop computer, open up WinSCP, and we can just go ahead and type in 10.66.66.181, port number 22, and the username is whatever you set up on your Linux machine. So for mine it was test and password. And go ahead and log in. And yep, we want to trust it. So here we go, by default it puts you into your user folder. So if we browse back, there's our user folder, and here is our root directory. So let's go home, test, and here you can just kind of work it like normal. You can create a new folder, browse through all the directories, and copy uh, files over. So let's get to the desktop over here on our left side. And this is the folder we're going to copy once it's done extracting. So let's just let it do it. Let it. <laughs> let's just let it do its thing for now. All right, now that it's extracted. We can go into WinSCP and click the Upload button after selecting this folder. So, Upload, yep. And this is just going to copy our downloaded server files onto our Ubuntu server instance so that we can go in there and use them. 
All right, once it's finished copying, then we can just hop on our server. So if you have physical access to your server, you can just hop on that. Or if you're still on your other computer, you can use something like PuTTY to SSH into it. But either way, once you're on it, you can do an LS, which is a list. And you can see that we have that folder here under our home directory. So if we do a change directory, period forward slash, and we type in all of that. If you don't want to type it all in, just put in the first letter or two and then hit tab and it'll auto complete. And once we're in there, we can do another LS or list and you can see all of our server files that we're going to be working with. So the first one that we're going to do is we're going to just run the FTB install and that's going to be shftb install.sh. And this is going to install the feed the beast uh, server files. And there we go. It's done. So we can do another LS and see what else we got now which it looks like everything is basically the same with the exception of the minecraft server.jar file. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to run server start. So sh and then server start.sh and it says make sure to read the EULA. That does not exist right now, so we're going to continue anyway and it's going to try Oh, we get an error. It says java not found. All right, we forgot to install java. So to do that, we need to do an apt-get update uh, sudo apt get update enter in our uh, password here there we go and then sudo apt get install default dash jre i believe yep there we go 340 megabytes of additional space press y and click enter all right now that we have java installed we can all right, run the start server again. So let's do another list just to make sure we're still in the right directory and do an sh server start dot sh. And yep, we're going to click enter to the uh, make sure to read the EULA. And this should get about halfway done and pop back out saying that there was an EULA error or something like that. Yep, there we go. You need to agree to the EULA. OK, so let's do another LS or list. And you can see we have the EULA dot text file. So if we do a sudo nano eula.txt it'll open up our eula document and we need to just go down backspace false and change it to true and then control x y for yes and click enter to overwrite that file and now we'll do the same uh, server start command sh server start dot sh and this should actually start our server with a brand new world and everything so let's just let it go through all this, start the server, load the mods, all that good stuff. Now while we're doing that, let's go ahead and download our client. So open up the web browser and Google Twitch client. And download the Twitch desktop app and click download and save that. Now I already have it installed on my computer so I'm just going to open it. But once that's done, just install it. And once it's installed, just go to the mods section. And it should show up Minecraft. If it doesn't, then you would just click on it and hit install. And once that's installed, you can go in and you can browse uh, Feed the Beast uh, mod packs. And just do a search down here for Direwolf. And hopefully it doesn't spaz out like it just did to me. Don't know why it's doing that. You can also go to browse all mod packs and do the exact same thing. So right there it shows as the top one. But if you search it, there we go. 212 and you would just go down to install. And then at that point, it would show up in your My Mod Packs section. And for that, you would just hit play. Now, something to note with this mod pack, you might want to go into the launch options, uh, click on the Direwolf one, and change your uh, Java arguments. You might want to do this on the server as well, but I left them all default for now. So by default, it has a maximum of uh, 3,000 megabytes of RAM that it'll use. So usually what I do is I'll change that to either 4,000 or if you have enough RAM, 8,000. And I'll kind of bump these up to one or two thousand as well. So one gig of RAM over here and then four or eight gigs over here. I found that it plays pretty slow with this uh, default configuration, but we're going to do that anyway. So just go ahead and click play. Let's pop back over to our server and see how that's doing. And it looks like my uh, console has stuck, so we're going to exit out of that. There we go. It's preparing the spawn area now, which should be one of its last steps. Our actual game client is still loading, so give it a few more minutes. And at this point you can see our server is finished in the background. So now we're just waiting on the client to finish. Uh, first time you start this up, it's going to take a lot longer than normal. So 
Just to give you a little bit of reference, this virtual machine I'm setting it up on is using four gigs of RAM and only two cores off the processor. And this whole process so far has probably taken me over an hour. So just be patient with the installation of everything. The installation of Java takes forever. Um, if you have a slow desktop, the extraction of the server files takes forever. And waiting for the server to start up and the client to load also takes forever. So don't expect it to be super fast. All right, and there we go, games launch. So let's go to multiplayer and connect to our server. So I like to click on add server, give it a nice name, like new server, and type in the address, so 10.66.66.181. Click done, and click play. And we should see the server behind here start doing some things while we connect. A lot of times, the first time you try to log into a server, it doesn't want to take you for whatever reason, so you might have to try a couple times. And we didn't see the server do anything because I guess my terminal had timed out, but if it was working, you would uh, see us connect back there. But this does not look like our brand new server. This looks like my other server. So I think we connected to the wrong one. <laughs> Maybe that's why we didn't see anything uh, on the server console. So let's disconnect. All right, so this one I accidentally clicked on the other server. So a new server. So let's connect to new server now. And there we go. Now we see the server console actually doing something back there although it looks like it just blanked itself out but we connected anyway so here is the server that we just set up so that is how you install a minecraft server on ubuntu server now there are a few other options that we can do so if we go back to our console here oh there's all this stuff from uh, us connecting to the server if we just do a stop for the server and do an ls you can see some of the files that we can edit here so one of the main ones is server.properties so if we do a sudo nano server.properties put in our password we can see some of the settings that we might want to change so spawn npcs uh, the server ip the server port world size all of that the ones i usually change with a new server is the level name which I always have a hard time seeing. Yeah, right here, level name. I usually change this to something like New World, and then I'll put in a level seed if I have one that I really like. So that's kind of what I like to change here. You can also change message of the day or whatever, but these are your general server settings if you want to edit them. We'll do a control X and we'll do no, because I don't want to save that. Do another list, and we can actually edit the uh, server start.sh. So sudo nano server start.sh. That is not what I meant to do. I meant to do settings.sh. So sudo nano settings.sh. Here we go. Here's where we can uh, change our maximum RAM and some of our other uh, Java parameters. So a lot of these are already in here by default. So it references this when you use the start server command, but if you do want to customize those things, then that's where you would do it. And that's pretty much all I got for you. It's uh, a little intimidating with the command line, but it is straightforward. Really, all you got to do is have Linux running, install Java on it, and copy over the Minecraft server files, and then you run them in a certain order. So you do FTB install, and then server start, and then accept the EULA, and then server start again, and you're golden you can connect to it at that point. So hopefully this will get you off the ground with the Minecraft server, Feed the Beast on Ubuntu server. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And if you have any uh, other ideas for a video for me to make, also let me know in the comments. But other than that, uh, have fun with Minecraft.